Newt Gingrich spoke at CPAC, and he did his usual fear-mongering about Muslims. Let's listen to a portion of the speech here, and see if you can catch the line. Well, there's multiple lines that are really ominous, but there's one that sticks out in my mind in particular. Let's listen. People are really hungry for somebody to just tell the truth and lay it out clearly. And, you know, and at the point in that speech when I said, if somebody says to me, that they want to cut off my head, I would like to kill them first to minimize the risk of losing my head. Now, this is not the modern post-America Obama Kerry worldview. This is the classic Andrew Jackson American worldview, which is if you really want to pick a fight with me, I'd rather beat you uh, so that I can then be in charge rather than have you win. Now, I know this is very, in, in a lot of our schools today, Talking about winning and losing is a sign that you're, you're being judgmental. But candidly, when I look at a place like ISIS or Boko Haram, you are absolutely correct to say, I think America should win and they should lose, and there should be no question about our goal. <laughs> These guys make it too easy. They use the most general language, vague, abstract language. You know, I think we should win, and they should lose. As if, like, liberals are sitting around going, you know, I'm not sure who I'm rooting for in this whole ISIS versus America thing. No, we all want to beat ISIS. We all want to see them go away. The question is, how do you do it? And you using childish platitudes does not help the situation in terms of crafting an intelligent policy to deal with the issue. He says, you know, I want to kill them before they cut off my head. But who's cutting off your head, Newt? Who's cut cutting off your head? Who's going to Wyoming and going, pizza man, pizza man, anybody home? Somebody opens the door. I ISIS. Cutting off somebody's head. It's not, it's not happening. It's not happening. There's not, they're not here. They're not here. It. We spoke about this in an earlier segment, but what is it? In the past five years, less than ten people have died. Probably less than five people have died from Islamic terrorism in the United States. You know how many people died from uh, just gun violence, including everything? So, uh, homicides, suicides, accidents, you name it. 32,000 every year. So he's fear <gasps> Be afraid of ISIS! I want to kill them before they cut off my head! Be afraid! Be afraid! Newt, you know, the chances of you dying but from guns, which you support, is much higher. Much, much higher. The chances of you dying because of a cop are much higher. And that's even with you being really white and really rich. The statistics for black people are way above and beyond what the likelihood is for you to die because of a cop. But the chances of you dying because of a cop are much higher! See, that these, these guys are just fact deniers, and that's the thing that drives me crazy, that are other parts in his speech, I saw the whole thing earlier, he talks about how, you know, it's the Democrats who deny the facts, and then he goes on to spew, like, 17 factually incorrect things in, like, a three-minute block. You're, you're a silly person, Newt, you really are, like, people like, oh, he's the uh, intelligent Republican. Intelligent, my ass! You know what it is? He knows how to speak, like, he knows how to... Uh, hit the right buttons and put the inflection over the proper words and he knows how to he's more coherent than other republicans he's not rick perry he's not george w bush so people mistake that for being intelligent no intelligent means you actually have good ideas too not just that you're able to use your mouth but the line that i referenced uh, before we saw the clip there did you catch it he he praised the uh, the Andrew Jackson approach. You know, I want to do the Andrew Jackson approach where we win and we go after the people who are coming after us. Uh, Newt? Andrew Jackson was the bad guy in that story. And Andrew Jackson was not uh, the person who was playing defense. He was the one who played offense. He, of course, did the Indian Removal Act and the Trail of Tears and did the Native American Genocide. It's a well-known historical fact that he was a deep racist. And the irony of Andrew Jackson is that he would talk about the Native Americans like, look at these savages, primitive savages with their face paint and their different culture, and God, they're so crazy that they, they love peace, and that makes them savages. 
But me, let's send the military to slaughter them all, take them off their land, ship them westward, and call them savages as we are forcing them to do that at the barrel of a gun. But see, Newt Gingrich has the same kind of complex as Andrew Jackson did. He views it as nothing we do can ever be wrong, can ever be bad, can ever be an issue. That's why he allows himself to go out there and say, how do we uh, beat ISIS? Kill them. That's the John McCain strategy too. Uh, how do we kill them before they cut off my head? To them, that's 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 all they need. That's all the details they need. Kill them. So what? Do you, okay, uh, airstrikes nonstop, drone strikes nonstop, ground invasion. You're in Syria. You're in Iraq. Um, you probably end up at some point in Libya. You go to Pakistan and Yemen and Somalia to also fight Boko Haram and fight Al Shabaab and all these. And and he's yes, yes, kill them. Do that. We're not. This war is more like a Vietnam than it is like a World War II. In World War II, the Nazis all had uniforms, and they had an Air Force, and they had a Navy, and we knew where they were. And when we're talking about ISIS, and when we're talking about jihadists, they mix in with the civilians in the towns in rural Syria that they took over. They've taken over towns where people are subjugated by them and under their control, and they don't want to be under their control, but they have to pretend to be on their side or else they get fucking beheaded in the street. So you can't fight them as if they're the Nazis, as if it's World War II. You can't do a ground invasion and just start killing people. But this nuance doesn't get through his brain. He doesn't understand that this is more guerrilla warfare than anything else. And it also doesn't cross his mind that, unfortunately, Obama agrees a lot with him because he's done 2,500 airstrikes of ISIS. How is that weak, by the way, Newt? How is that not in line with what you're calling for and what you're arguing for? I'm just, it bothers me to no end this simplistic view of shit. Like, kill them! We need to win! Oh, really? I didn't know that. How do you win? What do you, how do you uh, find a way to contain ISIS as best as possible? There's no way you're ever going to kill literally every jihadist on the planet. That idea is going to live on, son. The idea of, you know, hey, I, all the infidels suck and behead them and they're all terrible and yada yada yada. There's no way that we could get rid of that. So the question is, how do you contain it? And how do you make it so that... It doesn't become a problem specifically for the United States of America. And the answer to that is, let the people in the region deal with it. I got news for you. If you don't know about ISIS, if you don't know about the, these jihadists, you know who they want to kill more than Americans? Shiites. They want to kill the people in Iran, who, by the way, you also hate. They, they got their hands full, buddy. They're dealing with Assad in Syria. They're dealing with... Uh, people in Iran, now they're dealing with people in uh, Jordan and Egypt, and they're getting it from all sides right now. There's also other Western nations. Australia has done some airstrikes in France. Uh, they've done airstrikes in Mali from France because in northern Mali is basically al qaeda uh, They've taken that area over. So other people are going to take care of this fight, Newt, and the way that you protect the United States of America and you protect our people is to not get involved ourselves. Because once we get involved... Oftentimes, then we become the target. And especially when we get involved and we kill so many civilians that we create more terrorists. Look, it's very simple. We started the war in ter uh, on terror. Uh, or, I'm sorry, we did the war in Afghanistan in 01, did the war in Iraq in 03. That's when it started. And then today, after all the fighting and after all the people we killed and after all the uh, aggression and offensive nature of our attack, what happened? There's more terrorists today. So what do you do to fix that situation? Well, you don't do the same thing because the same thing is going to keep t pushing us down the wrong path. And by the way, it's a waste of money and it's a waste of American lives, never mind the civilian lives overseas. So how do you fight it in an intelligent way? Well, the way you fight it is to pull out, let the people in the region take care of it, and they will or else they'll perish, right? And they are going to take care of it because they uh, have stronger militaries and more people they just need to have the will to fight and if we're not there backing them up like a helicopter parent then they'll uh, stand up and fight but also so whenever the u.s does get involved it would have to be or i think the intelligent way to go about it is special forces and by the way you have to use the special forces within all the proper legal parameters like if you got to go through the un and nato and congress in order to approve different things, then yes, you have to go through those legal channels. But look at what we did with Osama bin Laden. It was special forces that put a bullet in his brain. So that's the model of success. That's the model that we know works. The other models don't work because we've seen empirically that they don't work. But what do you do to just rile up the base? You go out there and you use vague terms, right? Kill them before they behead me. We should win.
oh, how smart you are. I didn't know that we were supposed to win. And, oh, Andrew Jackson was great with that Native American genocide he did. Maybe we could do one with Muslims also. I mean, no. I did, did I say that out loud? Fuck.